So, uh, welcome to the last session of our Osterspiele lectures. We have looked at the development from Osterfeier to Osterspiele, then concentrating on the Innsbrucker Osterspiel as one of the most um, extant, uh, longest uh, settings of the Easter cycle, um, and then at the Osterspiel von Muri as the earliest extant vernacular example of Easter place. And what I want to do with you today is looking at an um, Easter play that was written down later than both of these we have been looking at, but is look, uh, um, based on earlier traditions, actually. Um, so going back to the ceremonial um, setting, um, the liturgical setting to be acted out in um, a church context, or more precisely in this case, in the context of a Cistercian Abbey, the Abbey of Wienhausen, where we, uh, which is also called Das Osterkloster, uh, a nice uh, <laughs> internal rhyme, because its uh, devotion really focused on Easter. So we can see in um, visual examples from the um, Abbey, that it, um, there is a long tradition of celebrating Easter with partly acted out scenes, and we can see um, in the uh, um, Abbey reflections of enacting um, resurrection as the most crucial fact of Christian faith the redemption uh, wrought by uh, Christ. It's one of two, uh, actually, uh, plays or ceremonials found in Wienhausen in 1952 under the floorboards of the nuns' choir, where it dropped literally through the cracks. And if you see the format of it, you can understand why. It's... Um, the smallest manuscript we've seen so far. And um, it's completely rubbed down the first uh, front page. And, um, but it's an, a complete copy. Uh, the last uh, page is empty and it ends with an Alleluia. And what we have here probably is the performance copy for the nun. Um, perhaps the cantrix, uh, the um, choir mistress, for uh, acting the Mary Magdalene uh, role. So we have, after we had seen the a prompter's copy and a director's role, um, we have here a third version, and it's as serendipitous as with the survival of the other place that we actually have that. And uh, the other ceremonial is completely in Latin. It's also in this kind of format. But here we have the transition um, from the Latin liturgy to vernacular explanations um, that also marks this uh, transition between ceremonial and play. The text um, as I said, was written down in the 14th or 15th century. The script isn't really datable that clearly. And the language reflects a mix of um, Low German elements. So Wienhausen sits squarely in the Low German speaking area of the Hanseatic League. But we have uh, several High German features like Z instead of T, so Herze instead of Hart, uh, Herte, um, which indicate that it probably was copied or adapted from an earlier um, High German version, which might well be as old or even older than uh, the vernacular place that we have been looking at. Um, so. Here in the, um, on the screen you see here this line, Wante uh, her meine Drovekeit trostet heft mit sina 
and then it's spelled S-O-Z-Y-C-H-E-Y-T, uh, so Zosichheit, um, Süße, uh, so in the modern German version would be, denn er hat uh, meine Betrübtheit getröstet mit seiner Süßigkeit. Um, be, uh, and uh, the Middle Low German wouldn't have had the Z. Um, we have here a, a native speaker of uh, Dutch. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, how would the Dutch version be the rhyme of. Zoetigheid. Zoetigheid. So. Um, but, the, but the U sound is actually native, so that it probably would have been Zoetigheid. Zoetigheid, yeah. So, and, uh, so we have. Süße as Middle High German version, Sorte right as Dutch version, and it's somewhere um, uh, navigating between <laughs> these uh, different uh, German uh, dialects. It's uh, just um, one choir, one gathering uh, of leaves, which was stitched in the middle. You can still see the thread here coming out. So. Uh, really to be held in hand and uh, carried around. Um, but it's carefully laid out, so it um, has some dignity, like a music manuscript. So it has this um, illuminated initial, the rubrication, so the Salvator and Maria, Mag, uh, Mag, Maria Magdalena are indicated uh, different from what we had seen in the Oster uh, play from Muri, where we had very few indications, and uh, neither the Innsbrucker Osterspiel nor the uh, Osterspiel von Muri have actually rubrication um, in it. So um, it was a rich abbey, um, very well educated nuns, so they lay out even their little performance copy like a proper um, liturgical manuscript, which also shows its we are in the sacred context, not in the um, secular context. Um, it has been reworked and it is obviously a, a work in progress document. You see here on the right hand of um, this double spread uh, in darker ink an additional scene, which is a Thomas scene. You can just perhaps see Thomas being um, added in here. Uh, so um, the, um, that is one of the scenes that actually come also in the Innsbrucker or Osterspiel between the Hortulano scene and the celebration um, with the apostles of the doubting Thomas. Um, it's a scene um, where um, Mary Magdalene also appears, so she probably scribbled it in uh, just with the indication what she had uh, to sing without completely giving then um, what uh, Thomas uh, was singing. So again, we, we don't have a complete picture of uh, the play. We have um, a glimpse through uh, the eyes of the, one of the actors on um, what one nun would have uh, experienced. And um, the roles indicated in the manuscript are the Salvator, um, Christ, so, uh, the Saviour, Maria, uh, Maria Magdalena, Thomas, just for this interpolated scene, and um, also it has uh, the indication of uh, chorus, so the nuns would have joined in, um, in uh, choral responses to what was acted out. So looking back at uh, the whole tradition, at the ceremonial tradition behind the Wienhäuser Osterspiel, I've given you a screenshot from uh, a video which you can watch online of um, the Weingartner um, Passions und Osterspiel, acted by a Tübingen um, a group of musicologists and uh, uh, they tried to play it at the uh, space where it would have been performed, despite uh, the backdrop having been completely barocized, uh, barocized uh, in the 
Abbey of uh, Weingarten, which is uh, near the Lake Constance, so uh, southern Germany, but linked to uh, Wienhausen because they are both foundations by the Guelphs, um, Heinrich der Löwe, and they are both uh, some of the most important holy blood um, uh, places in uh, Germany where medieval devotion um, took place around a drop of uh, holy blood in, uh, contained in a relic. And you have the uh, ye, uh, annual Blutritt still in, um, the, uh, in Weingarten. So you have the liturgical tradition running through the Middle Ages and um, you have amplifications going on um, flexibly because you can always go back to the liturgy. The liturgy is the steady thing that comes round every year. So uh, you can um, amplify it in different ways. So you, um, the type one of the ceremonials would be dramatizing the way to the tomb. Um, so acting out uh, the desperation of uh, the Marys uh, asking who will uh, turn away the stone for us. Then uh, you can act out uh, the dialogue between the angels and uh, Mary. And the second type um, is then the interaction between uh, actually Mary Magdalene and um, the apostles. And that's um, part of what has been ha happening in the Wienhausen Easter play. And this is based on three liturgical uh, sequences that already partially dramatize. So you have a dialogue going on in the Victime Paschalis, uh, or Victime Paschali, both forms are there, um, Laudis. And that is uh, really the basic uh, structure underlying the second part of uh, the Wienhausen Easter play. Uh, and uh, then the third type is also picked up here, and that is the amplification of the Hortulanus scene, the um, meeting of Mary Magdalene uh, with uh, Christ as the gardener. So what the Wienhausen Easter play does is it uh, draws together all the scenes uh, with Ma uh, Mary Magdalene as uh, the strong woman in the story. Um, so she becomes uh, the main um, actor and um, elements from the liturgy are picked up to chime with that, which would be very appropriate to be acted out by nuns. So what is uh, this um, sequence? Sequence is a, a liturgical musical form, uh, but also a literary form, um, which starts with a programmatic opening uh, verse 1, um, let us offer praise to the um, uh, Passover victim uh, Christ. And then what follows are always um, Doppelversikel, so a musical line that is repeated, and this is quite often used to showcase um, oppositions um, and the whole uh, sequence is built around um, this antithesis between death and life, um, so uh, passion and resurrection. And uh, this is compared uh, with uh, Christ as the Easter lamb, who is at the same time um, the sacrifice and uh, uh, the redeemer. So um, you'll hear it in the music uh, that uh, there is a fight going on between mors et vita, um, duelle conflixere meando, so that the prince of life who was dead now reigns as the living. And um, this is very typical for uh, the sequence structure. So uh, a programmatic <laughs> opening, you have the same in the Laudis Salvatori, um, you have it picked up in the German form of the Leich. I don't know whether you've uh, done Walter van der Vogelweide, um, who writes a programmatic Leich that also talks about 
the redemption of uh, mankind. So it's the big themes that are uh, dealt with in this uh, very um, ceremonial um, uh, celebratory form of the sequence. And um, so then in verse 3 you have uh, the apostles asking uh, Mary Magdalene, Dic nobis Maria quid vidisti in via, then Mary Magdalene answering. And that is um, the part given then to the chorus in uh, the Easter play of, from Wienhausen, where you see indicated in the rubric here, chorus. And so that's the point where uh, you come in. Um, so we'll practice uh, now. I'll, I'll sing it once and then uh, we'll repeat it twice. So that, and you'll have three um, attempts at it in the play because it's um, made for th uh, three times lucky, but a, a bit of a fairy tale, but also, to, uh, of course, uh, referring to the Trinity. Uh, it's taken out of the sequence and made into an antiphonal response between Mary Magdalene and uh, her sisters um, in the crisis. Dic nobis Maria, quid vidis in via dit. Dic nobis Maria, quid vidis in via. Once more. Give it a go. You will be on the video. Dic nobis Maria, quid vidis in via. Better. Uh, so I've just for comparison, I've um, given you once more the scenes in the Innsbrucker uh, Osterspiel, where you have um, all of the scenes that are here um, in one uh, short sequence spread out and interpolated with the comic scenes of the merchant uh, buying the ointment um, and um, prefaced by the harrowing of hell. So this time we aren't on this big stage uh, stretching from uh, Pilate to the mouth of hell. We all have it concentrated in the nuns' uh, choir, but we have the advantage, or the nuns have the advantage, to have Christ among them in real form because the sepulchre, of, uh, which we've seen um, as illustration of the scenes, would have been in the middle between the two choir stalls uh, standing, and Easter morning would be the time when the lid would be put down, the body of Christ would be out, you would see the empty tomb, you would see in the uh, tomb just uh, the shroud, and uh, so this could have acted as one of the props, actually. So um, we could imagine that from both sides of the choir stalls, the nuns uh, who acted out Christ and Mary Magdalene would approach and play uh, around that. And you um, have the scenes that are in the play here, but you also have scenes that are only in the liturgy, that aren't in the Bible. So you see here um, Christ before Pilate, uh, carrying the cross, crucifixion, um, the uh, lament under the cross, the burial. And then you have here a scene where Christ is standing at the right side, blessing the font, while a priest is on the left-hand side. And this is actually what happens in the night before Easter, if you have ever been to an um, Easter night uh, service, you will have a renewal of baptism in there. So this um, shows what we have here isn't simply a historical narrative. It's something that is built into um, the liturgy. And then you have the herring of hell, referring um, that would have been sung in the Cum Rex Gloriae, with the Adventisti that we had seen in the Innsbrucker Osterspiel. 
And here, uh, then, uh, Christ jumps out of the tomb. Uh, the angel shows the shroud to uh, the women. And here, Christ as the gardener appearing to Mary Magdalene, the doubting Thomas, uh, with a laying his fingers into the wound of Christ, the Ascension, Pentecost, and heavenly Jerusalem. So you have the whole redemption story uh, linked into the Easter service they would be experiencing from the nuns' choir. And uh, it actually gives you on the sepulchre speech bubbles, so the key moments are um, repeated. Um, it has been uh, wrongly restored in the 19th century, so uh, it's pluras instead of pluras. Quid pluras, what, uh, why do you weep? Quem queres, whom do you seek? Uh, asks Jesus as the gardener, and uh, Maria answers, tu lerunt dominum meum et nescio ubu poseerunt eum. So they took my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. Biblical... Um, text that is then picked up in, in all of the plays and translated into the vernacular. So here, just giving you again um, the text from the Innsbrucker Osterspiel, uh, where it says, Tung Jesus venit in specie hortulani et canta. So Jesus comes looking like the gardener and sings, Mulia quid ploras quem queris. And then uh, Mary answers um, in a slightly elaborated form, Domine, si tu sustulisti eum, dicite mihi ubu poso isti eum, et ego eum tollam. Uh, if you have taken him, Lord, uh, uh, tell me where you put him so that I can um, uh, take him to me. And then in the Innsbruck uh, Osterspiel, you have the slightly comic interpolation of uh, Christ accusing Mary to uh, run out about um, after boys uh, because she's looking for um, this uh, man. But um, then it returns to the um, serious thing. So we don't have any comic scene in the um, Wienhausen Easter play because it's acted still within the confines of the convent, um, but we have a, a return to the biblical uh, base amplified to the liturgical settings. And uh, here um, we have the same sequence in the Innsbrucker Easter uh, play of first Mary Magdalene um, believing and then in a kind of chain reaction transmitting the good news of the resurrection first to Thomas and then to, to the other apostles. So Wienhausen um, is, as I said, in the northern German area, low German speaking, very rich abbey because financed by the salt trade of Lüneburg. And a royal foundation, uh, the Anna of Landsberg was the daughter-in-law of um, Henry the Lion, founded in 1230. And in 1230, she already uh, gave the figure of the risen Christ to stand on the nuns' choir uh, constantly in view of um, the nuns and containing in its sight um, the ampulla with the holy blood. So you were in the presence of the real Christ. It wasn't just an, an, an image that was there. It was his blood, um, literally, that was present while you were singing the liturgy, but also um, acting this. Um, the nuns picked up this theme by um, painting themselves the nuns' choir. So we, ha we know that three nuns, all called Gertrud, uh, painted in the um, 14th century, the whole um, ceiling, repeating the scenes most important to them. 
So they depict the resurrection exactly with the same gesture as the sculpture they had in front of them. And this engagement with the um, figures continues because in the 15th century they made new dresses for the statues, which are still there. So uh, Christ had several dresses, his Sunday best for, for Easter and um, uh, then in different liturgical colors for other times of the year. So this actually is, is a kind of um, nearly like puppet um, theater engaging um, with the risen Christ. And the, you can all uh, go and see it. It's still extant as a religious community. So um, um, in um, the picture is the current abbess Renate von Rando, who is a Protestant Cistercian, a uh, very interesting uh, combination because the convent became Lutheran but continued as religious community. So this is um, the nuns' choir where it would have been acted looking to the west end, so the risen Christ would have been at the east end. The sepulchre would have been between the two uh, sides of the choir stalls. And below this floorboards, there were um, all the things found. So how would they have acted it? Um, we don't have any descriptions here uh, for, for this. We had for the Bordesheimer Marienklage, which is also from northern Germany, the instruction that um, Christ debit se preparare cum casula rubra, with a red chasuble, um, and debit habere diademater de papiro, so uh, a paper crown, probably something a bit like out of a cracker. And so we thought how to uh, dress Christ and then <laughs> decided we, we wouldn't go for uh, uh, the uh, cracker crown, but um, have a distinguishing feature. And uh, so um, since it says, Diadema Jesu habeat rubram crucem ante should have a red cross on the front and at the back, uh, we thought we could have the hood um, acting as um, with a red um, so, um, yeah, because it also picks up, um, the nuns wouldn't have had the need to put on a paper crown because they already had their red cross to remind them that they were brides of Christ. So um, this is from a little devotional image, again, this size, and I've massively blown up so the nun would just be uh, this, um, that shows her in adoration and, uh, with a rosary in her hand and uh, the white veil with a red cross to indicate. So we decided um, we would uh, just go for um, the, our kind of formal dress, which is uh, then uh, the um, Oxford gowns instead of uh, what the nuns would have worn for that, which would have been their everyday habit um, of a Cistercian nun plus uh, the veil uh, with a red cross. And to distinguish, um, Alderic has to play both um, Christ and Thomas. So um, as Christ he'll wear the hood with the red and as Thomas uh, just uh, the gown. And probably uh, the nuns would have uh, small props like uh, that just to indicate um, what was, who was, who was who. Um, as I said, they interacted with uh, Christ, and here you have um, a little, again, this size devotional image uh, written by a nun and painted by one of the Wienhausen nuns, also from under the floorboards, where you can see how it would have looked in full setting, because um, you would have had a movable angels to put up we only have a pair of wings left <laughs> from because um, uh, it's always dangerous, as you might remember from dolls' houses, if you have little parts that can be um, removed and put in and out. So um, Christ had several banners that could be changed, um, uh, which could be given in his hand uh, depending on, on the time. Uh, 
and uh, the angels um, could be as he uh, dressed up. So that's why the wings were removable, so that you could put on the dress on, on the angel and then put uh, the wings back in and put uh, the two angels on either side of the two. What we also have from the Horde uh, um, are the oldest spectacles in Europe, pointers for reading, um, other parchment slips, wax tablets with styli uh, for writing. Uh, so in Wienhausen we really have um, an image of the uh, full everyday life of a convent. And um, 45 of the 70 boxes are still not sorted, so you see what fell through the cracks and that it was possible to for something to fall through the cracks because this is a signature 1940s uh, plastic comb that also was found underneath. But you see uh, these small devotional images, you see something for weaving, you see a bit of an unfinished dress for uh, Christ, uh, you see a little token with um, initials of Christ on it. All right, but coming to uh, the play as such, if I could have you. So the scene is, um, Mary is in, in the garden and uh, she's meeting uh, this man whom she takes to be um, uh, the mm -hmm. gardener. And um, it starts mid-sentence, uh, but uh, probably all what uh, Mary Magdalene had to say. Die meinen Kumbe klagen. Min dode Heere is mi benommen und deme grave. Ich ne weet nicht, war he is getragen. Gude Gerde nere, do aller Frauen Ehre. Hast du da ich von vernommen, sage mi. Ich mach dir frommen. Ich wollte ahne dienen hat, gerne bis daden bat. Dat will ich laten ahne hat. Mulje, gut Floras. Wie sage wat du meines, dat du so sehr weines. Du Leben, Dominum meum, et nesse jubi posui und eum, si tu sus solis deum, recite me, alleluia, et ego horum tollam, alleluia. Herre, hast du eine Henne genommen, sage, war ist er gekommen. Ich will die Jümber priesen, dass du eine mir willst wiesen, und er ist gar bequeme, dass ich in Dot Tommy nehme. Oh, denn sie ist gekommen, die Siede gar wo, wie die wird um mich um mich um. Eier, so sei Herr Jesu Christ, die du aller Welde Trost bist, von einer reinen Magd geboren, O oh, wie, dat ich die Hahn verloren, Quale liedet das Herze min, als ich mit einem Speere durchs Docken sie, bet an den Grund, bitter liegen gewund, dat ich mir nicht ne kann gefrauven, niemand ne mach mir zu Troste kommen. Eier, minniglicher Heere, durch dienes selbes Ehre, lacht die Minen jama und warmen und tröste mich viel Armen. 
Wäre es möglich, dass die Steine mochten schrien und weinen, sie möchten Altus bringen von der Piene, die mit winget. An meinem Härte liede ich grote Smerte, dass ich gerne wäre tot. Ei, ja, lef vor alle lef, bedenke meine Not, dass ich die Möte schauen mit meinen sündigen Augen. Maria. Herre, väterliche Trost, bist du dat? So bin ich gelost von allen Sorgen. Du bist mir noch Borge. Maria. Raboni. Herr Jesu Christ, tröste mich, ich du dat bist. Maria. Den Herzeleben habe ich gesehen an seiner Ehre, des freue ich mich viel sehr, wann der Hermine Dröwigkeit tröstet heft mit seiner Süßigkeit. Ich kann meinen Herrn sehen, das mache ich wohl der Wahrheit jen. Going to see the apostles. Victime paschalis laudis, im Moland Christianis. Das Paschgeopfer und der Lamm, das uns von dem Himmel kam, der schollen Lovenhüde, alle Christene Lüde. Agnus redimi dovis, Christus innocens patris, reconciliavit peccatoris. Das Lamm hatte scharf gelöst, der reine Jesus hat uns gelöst. Er hat uns alle Garde versöhnet mit seinem Vater. Moset bete du elo, konflikt segel mirando. Dux vite mortus, regnat vivus. Einen garwaldigen Kief haben der Tod und das Lief. Den Heft versöhnet Jesu Tod. Herr lebet, Minsche und de Gott. Ignobis Maria, quid vis in via. Once more, get up. <lacht> <lacht> Ich sag des lebendigen Gottes Graf, viel Grot Trost kam mir darf. Ich sag wie wahren Dingen, die Ehre sine Upstern Dinge. Ignobis Maria, quid vidis in via, sage, o oh, sage, Maria. An, angelicus testis, sudarium et vestis. Der heilige Engel tügen denn da, Jesu Upständige wäre wahr. Ich sag, de Lakene mit den Doken, die findet man da, wie sie will soken. Ignobis Maria, quid vidis in via. Marie, salige frohe, an die is all truhe. So gexit Christus bis mea, prezidis vos in Galilea. Christ, min hopene und min Trost, der uns alle heft gelöst, der es wahrlichen Uf gestan und ist zu Galilea gan. So, to come uh, to the end, empty page, <laughs> um, 
what we see here in the Wienhausen Osterspiel is um, liturgical ceremonial that has gone through um, the stages of all the amplification. So the nuns who would come to uh, the convent had been children in a lively market town where they would have seen um, the Easter plays like um, those we've seen um, with a comic scene, obscene scenes, so they know it all. And they integrate uh, this impulse to have the vernacular explanation of the Latin liturgy um, into uh, their daily life in the convent. Um, so what we see here, uh, I've seen in these three plays, are just rare glimpses into the everyday life of a medieval community or medieval communities stretching between um, city and convent or town and gown, uh, as it were, um, encompassing all of uh, these uh, uh, communities. And um, it's a, a tradition uh, that um, really ma uh, made liturgy for um, also the people in the town, less of something um, completely alien just in, in Latin, but something they could relate to and that uh, actually was explained to them um, by the voice of the nuns or by the voice of the actors as something that would um, concern them immediately. Thank you. Thanks. Also richtig, ja.